ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Need I Say Mer, a Christmas podcast. And today I'm delighted to welcome our special guest, Wayne Clark. Hello, Wayne. How are you today? Hello, Adam. It's really good to be with you. I'm very well, thank you. Well, it's great to have you. Can you quickly introduce yourself, uh, who you are, where you're based, what you do? Yeah, I'm Wayne. I'm in uh, in Manchester, on, in Gorton, on the east side of Manchester, where I'm pastor of uh, Trinity Baptist Church. I've been in Manchester for six years, but I've been a Baptist pastor for 35 years in various places. That's longer than I've been alive. That's exciting. <laughs> um, so that's a, a lot of Christmases you've celebrated in that time. It then. is a lot of Christmas. And I love Christmas. Uh, Christmas is my favourite time of the year, both in church and in family and just in society in general. I'm, uh, I'm very committed to the celebration of Christmas, both secular uh, and, and in church as well. And the, the, the aspect of Christmas that it gives us to, to share Jesus with the wider world. Yes, and I I did get the impression that you were very fond of Christmas because you have your own Christmas podcast. Yeah, um, I've been speaking about Christmas uh, in my writings and on radio uh, for for very many years, and I read Christmas books. This uh, bookshelf of, of of books that you can see behind me is completely full of books about Christmas. I've got about two hundred books about Christmas. Wow. I'm completely besotted about reading about the history of Christmas. And I put all that into a podcast that I did mainly last year uh, with a few more episodes coming out called Christmas Alphabet. Uh, the idea was to have 26 episodes of a podcast each, starting with a, a letter of the alphabet. Each uh, each episode would be things to do with the Christmas, starting with that letter of the alphabet, starting with A for Advent. So the first one came out on uh, in the, the week of Advent Sunday. Uh, and so they were every two weeks. So letter C came out on Christmas Day and then uh, they went through to uh, Z by the following Advent. So I did 26 episodes over the course of 52 weeks. That, that's very exciting. And, and yes, yeah, to have that many Christmas books. So you've probably discovered quite a lot of fun Christmas facts uh, over your reading. What are some of your favourite Christmas facts that you can share What's with us? my favourite Christmas fact? My favourite tiny Christmas fact okay. is the name of King Herod the Great's first wife uh, herod had 10 wives oh, but his okay. first wife uh, was called doris <laughs> makes everyone laugh that one uh, my favorite rather more complicated christmas fact is the story of the carol hark the herald angel sing which uh, we sing without thinking about the history of it and when you say who is it written by written by charles wesley one of the greatest hymn writers of all time except it wasn't really because when wesley wrote those words down he wrote Hark how all the welkin rings. Uh, the welkin mean, meaning the skies, the heavens. Um, and it was his friend Charles Whitfield, uh, George Whitfield, sorry, friend of Charles Wesley, George Whitfield, who rewrote it and said, no, 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 that doesn't work. Let's rewrite it as Hark the Herald Angels Sing Glory to the Newborn King, which when you think about it, isn't biblical. The, 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 the angels who visited the shepherds didn't sing glory to the newborn king. They sang peace on earth, but we sing it anyway. And yes. then the other peculiar thing about that carol is that when Wesley wrote the carol, he said he wanted the the tune that it was going to be sung to, because he didn't write tunes, he only wrote words. He said he wanted the tune to be one that was solemn and serious. And in his day, it was only ever sung slowly and uh, and as if it was a bit dirge-like, really. Okay. But then a hundred years later, uh, the famous composer Felix Mendelssohn had written a a tune, uh, part of a cantata to commemorate the um, the anniversary of the printing press, bizarrely. And um, Mendelssohn was a secularist. He wasn't a, a believer, he wasn't a Christian. And he said, if this music is ever used for anything else, it must only be used for secular purposes, not for church music. That isn't what it was for. But the English musician, uh, whose name was William Cummings, put together Wesley's or, or words as developed by Whitfield with Mendelssohn's tune and gave us the carol we sing today. So it's well, such a bizarre mixture of words that Wesley didn't write to tune a tune that Mendelssohn wrote for something else that was entirely secular that he didn't want used for, as a Christmas carol to become one of the, well, my favourite Christmas carol. I don't know if it's yours, but it's yeah, my favourite Christmas carol. It just says Christmas to me. Yeah, no, it, I, it, it would be my favourite as well. And I think Probably lots of people uh, would agree with it being a favourite, but may not 
know I didn't know all of that history either. It's a bizarre it's... mixture of all sorts of sources, but you know, they come together to make something that says Chris sounds like Christmas as well yes. as I'm concerned. Yeah. So we can still sing it and celebrate it. Uh, <laughs> but this year we can sing it with greater understanding of uh, some of the uh, amusing and interesting and complex history behind it. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, and no doubt you've got lots of other facts. Lots more can trivia. Listen to your that podcast to, to hear them. Listen um, to the Christmas Alphabet podcast yeah, and you'll find out more. But uh, f- for today, uh, I've got some questions for you. Okay. I'm, I'm Fire. asking all Fire of the guests to come onto this podcast. Uh, so we'll start with question one, Wayne. What is your favourite festive food item? Mm, I do like my Christmas food, um, but I'm more of a savoury person than a sweet person. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go for turkey dinner. But if I have to choose one bit of the turkey dinner, I think it's the sausage and bacon trimmings. The um, so- sausage sausages wrapped with bacon, but alongside the turkey and the stuffing and the potatoes and everything else, I wouldn't want wouldn't want the turkey the, the sausage and bacon just on its own but an okay. essential part of uh of turkey dinner for me yes yeah i yeah yeah, yeah. there's something about the whole meal the together whole, but then, a whole lot yeah but yeah i think that the pigs and blankets the sausage wrapped pigs in bacon, and blankets if you want to call it that yeah that, that's what that's what we call it do, do you do you not call it that uh, yeah i think i have heard it called that yeah okay i i assume that was a universal term but maybe not mm. There we go. Do you ever have them outside of Christmas dinner? I don't think yeah. so. No. I mean, I ate sausage and bacon separately, but I don't think I've ever been inclined to wrap the two together. Other no. than for Christmas, no. why we do that for Christmas dinner? Even with all my trivia knowledge of Christmas, I don't know. You don't know. Well, maybe, maybe one day you'll find <laughs> out, and you do a special episode of your podcast about Beef of pigs in blankets, blankets as part of my there Christmas alphabet podcast. You never yeah. know. There we go. Next question, then. Okay. Uh, your your favourite non-religious Christmas song. Obviously, you know a lot about carols. You've talked about your favourite carol, but your favourite the... non-religious Christmas song. Yeah, I love Christmas carol. I also I love the classics. I have to say, I, I like all sorts of Christmas music, but I think I'd probably go back to those set of classic songs that were written in the nineteen forties. And probably the one I'd choose above all is um, the one that's known as the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open okay. Fire, particularly the Nat King Cole version. Nat King Cole such a, was such a fabulous singer and could put such a lot of emotion into anything. It's, yeah, I think I'd go for that. The, the, the Christmas. Very evocative. When, you, when you hear it, it immediately puts you into a Christmas kind of mood, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's, it says... It, a lot of Christmas is about nostalgia, isn't it? Uh, although it's, it is being reinvented all the time and it's for every generation to re- to re- make what it, what we want of it i think there's a lot of nostalgia and a lot of uh, the american christmas particularly was to do with nostalgia for that immediate post-war period when a lot of those songs white christmas uh let it snow winter wonderland were all written in those years coming towards the end of or at the end of the second world war and uh, it was to do with uh, reinventing culture after the war and the Christmas song was one of those written in 1945. And Yeah, and I, I could ask you another food-related question at this point. Have you ever roasted chestnuts on an open fire yourself? No. Give that something <laughs> no. to try for this I, year. I don't know where I'd get, where I'd, how I'd produce the open fire. I suppose we have barbecues, but they tend to be summer things, don't they? We don't, we don't tend to uh, fire up the barbie at Christmas, so uh, <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe we should. There, there you go. There's a new Christmas thing to try out um that'll be let me know how you get on uh i'll ask you the next question then uh your least favorite christmas decoration something that concerns me a bit about the way christmas is being celebrated these days how is how american it's becoming i mean a lot of christmas traditions have crossed the across the atlantic both ways yes Mm -hmm. but there's some things that are um so american it hurts and i and i'm i'd rather stick with things that are more uh traditionally british being a bit of a traditionalist Mm -hmm. and there's one christmas decoration that's made its way over from america in recent years that i just don't get just don't understand i don't even know if this has come your way adam but the the christmas pickle the christmas pickle is is something that americans are uh, mad keen on and will have on all they have on their christmas tree um okay. that british people are starting to adopt and it will be coming to your to your house or to your neighborhood soon but <laughs> i don't like it 
a Christmas pickle. When I have first heard of the when, when I first heard of a Christmas pickle, for us as Brits, a pickle is a pickled onion, maybe, yes. or a yeah. jar of Branston. But for an American, a pickle is a pickled gherkin. So it's okay. a, sort of a, a long bendy green yeah. thing. And the Christmas pickle is a green uh, it's a it's made of glass like a bauble, but it's in the shape of a of a gherkin and you hang it on your tree and it's making its way over here. And I'm trying to say to British people, we don't need it here for a start. That isn't what a pickle is in Britain. A Christmas pickle for me, I, I'm quite happy to have a, um, a a pickled onion with my cold cuts on Boxing Day. But that's that's my Christmas pickle. I, I haven't yet come across that, but I appreciate the warning. I, I like the way you put it. That it will soon be coming to your neighbourhood. So I'm, I'm glad that this podcast can amplify that warning. But although, uh, having said that, we, we do welcome correspondence on this podcast. So if anyone wants to write in in defence of the Christmas pickle, uh, then uh, please do so. And I, I can, can share that. Uh, which li- brings me to the, the final question that I'm asking everyone. Your favourite person in the Nativity account, not including Jesus. Yeah. You, you did give me advance warning of this question. I, th- I have to think long and hard about this. But I'm going to go for someone re- fairly obvious. I'm going to go for Mary. But Mary, in a way that we don't often think about her, I think Mary has often been portrayed as a bit wet, as a bit um, wimpy, as a bit mild. But when I preach about Mary at Christmas, and when I think about Mary, and when I read about Mary in the Scriptures... I like to think about Mary, well, the, the, the adjective I like to describe her is as feisty. Okay. I think Mary is a real example of discipleship, of someone who was given a challenge to serve her Lord in a difficult, dangerous, unusual way, and she rose to the challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the angel says to her, um, you, you've you got this most special of of missions this mission impossible to be the mother of the child of god and when she says i am the lord's servant may it be to me according to your word i don't see her saying that as sort of oh may it be in me to me in a sort of completely passive submissive way yes she's submitting to the lord's will but she's doing it in a way that say yes may it be to me according to your word bring it on I'll do it. That challenge that you've given me, I will rise to that challenge. I will be a disciple of Almighty God in the way he wants me to be. I will do the thing that he has called me to do. I will be part of the eternal plan that he has graciously included me in. And then in, in, later on in Luke chapter 2, it says, uh, after the shepherds had come and then and then left her and Joseph with the baby, it says, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. She she was clearly a, a woman who thought long and hard about the tasks that the Lord had given her. And we see her later in the Gospels going through all sorts of hardships. We see her at the cross uh, suffering the death of her, of her son. And we see her in the, at the day of Pentecost receiving the Holy Spirit and, and still ready to serve in, uh, in the later years of her life. This is a, a girl, a woman who is a real hero of the faith. Uh, who is willing to take on the challenges that God gives her. And Lord, may I be like that. (laughs) Uh, I'm I'm so given to moaning and complaining and saying, oh, why do I have to do this? Aren't we all, naturally? But Mary just says, I'll do it, Lord. Whatever, if you've given me this job to do, then I'll get on and do it. And that's why for me, Mary is, I think, my favourite person in the Nativity story. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful perspective on on Mary uh, for us to take and ponder um, in our hearts as well. So thank you, Wayne. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope that you have a very happy Christmas. And happy Christmas to you, Adam. May the Lord bless you and be with you. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas.